So, I heard you like film props. Well, you came to the right place. G'day everyone, welcome to part 2 of the Magnum. Now to quickly start this off, I want you to click in the link in the below of my description box and follow that link to my Facebook fan page. It will take you straight to this image and then click download on the image and then take it into an A4 size document using uh, Microsoft Publisher or Word or whatever you want um, depending on if you're using a Mac or a Windows and I want you to put this image in. I've already structured it so it's kind of the right side size. So what you're going to do is you're going to drag the top corners into the rulers, the blue rulers, as you can see the top corner matches the blue corner and the bottom one hits the bottom. Don't worry about the right hand side but as long as you're matching it like you can see in my screen now you should be fine. Just go print it and then we apply it straight onto our styrofoam and we'll get cutting. Alright yeah, so we've printed it off and now we've placed on our styrofoam. Make sure that you have enough styrofoam to cover the whole base of the magnum. As soon as you place it on you'll be able to see and the first thing we're going to need to do is um, just tape it down so that when we're cutting around it it's not going to dislodge or move anywhere so that you'll get random lines on your gun. We want it always to be firm and strong and steady while we're cutting this. Just the main reason. The reason why I'm wearing gloves is because I actually like wearing gloves because it means my hands are able to slide over the foam without any traction or sticking to it. Um, but that's only because I prefer it. Now when you're cutting out these lines, we're not wanting to cut all the way into the foam. We're just doing light indents, so to speak, just so when we pull off this paper we can see a definitive outline on the styrofoam. Now, I'm, I'm going to say that again, we're not cutting into the styrofoam, so you don't even want to cut a centimeter. You're just scratching the surface enough so you can see when we take this paper off, we can go cut right into the styrofoam. Now, always use a sharp knife. If you would ever use a sharp knife, this would be the major part for it. The reason you don't want to use a blunt knife is because the surface of uh, styrofoam is quite a firm and sturdy one. And if you're using a blunt, it will actually tear, not cut. And you want, for this part, to at least have a nice, straight, sharp line. And always use a thin blade. You don't want to use a giant thick one for this part because, like I said, we're not trying to cut the gun. We're just trying to make the outline so we can see where to cut it. And notice how I'm missing out the trigger and the handrail. The reason for that was because for this stage you don't want it. We just want the major body build of the gun so that when we finish out, like now, we can just go and cut the full gun out and then we'll assemble it. So now, really I can't teach you this part, but as you can see, all I'm doing is just carefully going around the gun and just cutting off the blocks and the excess pieces that we don't need. The reason I'm, well, we need to do this first is because we don't want to carve detail into a gun that's not fully cut out yet. So just go around patiently. Don't rush it. This will take time. And it's obviously because you're cutting out the most dangerous part. Because there's a whole bunch of different places you've got to get into. And all these spaces that need to be cut out that are quite hard to get to. So please, um, if you haven't watched my video yet on safety, you can click here on the link. Or, and this will open up in another video so you can keep this one on your screen and it will just quickly teach you some safety tips on how to cut these things out because I don't want you losing a finger over these. So there we go, it's all cut out and we're ready to start doing the detail. But please, like I said, be careful and be safe when you have just done that. Alright, so we've successfully done our first stage in this weapon. We now have it in our block form. Now from here is actually going to be much harder. To, before we actually start carving detail on this, up, we need to use a technique that uh, many designers and artists such as myself uh, learn through experience and use this technique in everything we do to make sure that we know we can finish with products such as Spartan lasers or, or anything really. Now, what it doesn't have an official name, but really what it is, is you're seeing this block and we are looking at it through a designer and a final products perspective and we can actually see the final product. Now, sure, that seems a bit crazy, um, maybe a bit insane or something, but it's, well, majority of artists are a bit loopy and insane. I'm not saying that I am. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is a really clever technique that it does take a bit of our practice to do. Um, otherwise, it doesn't, your, your final products just won't work out. As you can see, I had no idea how to really do this Spartan laser. I actually had to go through at least three to four weeks of actually planning, identifying how many curves there were, how many angles, how deep each cut had to be, 
um, before I can even start carving detail. Because once you carve detail on it, you can't take it back. So every mark you make is permanent. Um, cutting styrofoam, so three weeks of just planning in my head to make sure I could get that, and in the end it finally worked. For now, luckily we're working with a magnum, so really it's not much to do at all. So really, I just want you to spend half an hour um, looking at pictures on the internet, seeing all the curvatures, all the um, depths and the valleys and the crevices in the gun, to really, well, we're not selling this one of course, but it's just for an example, and to really uh, see how and what I need to put in as effort to get these uh, marks. How fine I'm going to have to use the blade to get those nice, neat strokes. I'll be teaching you and showing you this throughout the further tutorials, but you also do need to know that in yourself, you have the confidence and determination to turn that into this. Now, of course, I'm not saying your one's going to be 100% perfect, like um, on your first go. You should have seen my magnums when I first started out. They were beyond horrible. I've only gone through experience, like I say, testing my um, creative theory on visualizing the final product, and I've got this far. So what we're going to do now is, well, in the next part, we'll go through and carve out the details slowly, and make sure we get everything right, but please, before, uh, until then, go check out all the pictures online, make sure you know how this gun is supposed to look, so that you can make it. My name's Andrew Cook, and remember we can achieve epicness, see you in part two.